speaking of things that could infuriate people, we got our next topic, which is the United States and their chances of winning at the next Copa America. And, you know, credit credit where it is due, this topic kind of jumped to my mind after I saw the tweet from Tactical Manager, and I'll throw that on screen for you guys right now. And I'll just read it for you since mm. you're standing right here. Uh, he said, I don't think it's crazy to think the U.S. men's national team can win the 2024 Copa America. Number one, it's in the United States. Number two, outside of Brazil and Argentina, the U.S. can compete with any other nation in Colmebol. Number three, just hope Brazil and Argentina cross paths early. If so, the U.S. men's national team would only need one upset. He also said Uruguay is better than the United States, however very beatable. Ecuador, Colombia, and the U.S. are about the same level now let's break this down how we talked about last <laughs> night you guys let us know in the comments where would you rank the united states in terms of the favorites to win the tournament what we're going to do now is we're going to start with the pros okay we're going to play devil's advocate because we don't agree with this but we're going to play devil's advocate and we're going to say okay what what is the argument that lends itself to the united states lifting this trophy and then we're going to give the cons to that argument and then we're going to tell you guys how we really feel so you can you know skip ahead if you just want to get straight to our opinion number one pro is exactly what he said which is it is in the united states yeah that is a massive it cannot be overstated enough how important that is that the tournament will be here because if it was in ecuador this this is a laughable no conversation yeah. to have it's honestly offensive to have but at we, that we've talked so much about how much the u.s depends on being at home for mm -hmm. their success, right? It is, it's honestly, it's, it's, it's worrying. It is worrying. How distinctly they play home versus away, you know? And, um, you know, the, a, pretty, a pretty reasonable World Cup run, um, notwithstanding, we rely very heavily on being at home and being on specific stadiums at home. Yes. Um, to, to that's, that's very much to our advantage. Now, how is that going to play out with the massive amount of Latinos that we have in this country? And uh, Latinos who will want to go to this very climactic Copa America here. Um, there's a lot of storylines culminating in this one. And a lot of people are going to want to be there. A lot of Latinos know this. But also, soccer is, it's, its stock is raising here in the United States. So I think, you know, East Coast games, West Coast games, there's going to be a pretty reasonable USA presence there, which is going to be very good for us. My biggest pro for us is that we are young and we are athletic. I think we happen to be a lot more athletic yes. than a lot of the Latino teams there. What they have is skill, tenure, and experience. We have young, raw athleticism, and I mean, I hope we're going to have some heart. Are we more athletic than Ecuador? I would say that that's, they're, that's young they're, one our, they're one of our biggest competitions. What, them and... Oh, Colombia are physical, too, man. Colombia's physical. Colombia's physical. They're, they're bigger, yeah. I think. Overall, are older they bigger? Too. Little, little, little a older, A little bit older. So we might edge them on speed, but we don't have a guy that can compete with, like, a Yeti Mina in the back. No, we were just talking about guys like Cuadrado and, like, how underrated they are. Like, mm -hmm. the man still got it. Yeah, the man does still have it. Luis I, Diaz, those golazos he was scoring in the last Copa. But we also talk about how understated um, Jedi's size is. Yeah. Right? Oh, he's he a freak. He is a back. freak. Yeah. And he's got he's got athletic prowess there. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm, nobody's going to shirk. You know, Christian Pulisic got that dog in him when he wants to run. He might not give you a million goals a tournament, but he's going to run his ass off. And that cannot be understated. But the Ecuadorians, too. The Ecuadorians, too. The Ecuadorians, I feel like every single one of them plays with that, that heart. You know, and they happen to be a very young team. They happen to yep. be a very fast team, and they're not going to shirk away from any sort of no. physical competition. And let's not forget this tournament. It is the Copa America. You want to go back? We just watched all those goals that were happening. How many of those were penalties? Because people aren't afraid to put a foot in. People aren't afraid to body you up in the box or just outside of the box. There's a lot of you. You watch the Copa America highlights back. There's a lot of grown man goals. There's grown man. <laughs> like, <laughs> grown man. These are, man these goals are grown there. men headers that are going in the like. This is not oh, yeah. the Gold Cup. You no, know, with, not at with all. With all due respect, Luis Diaz is putting in a physical like showcase. Bro, we said he had three Puskas nominees three in the Puskas. last Copa alone. Mm -hmm. Headers, flying aerial goals from a man who. How tall is he? Five five eleven. 
Maybe. I mean, he's got a fro, so it's kind of tough to, to gauge. It gives him a couple extra inches. But he's like slight, Tim's, too. He's pretty, like, he's pretty skinny. <laughs> me and Tim's. I mean, shit. <laughs> People have a different impression of me when I got the Tim's on. But, <laughs> it's a uh, different dynamic. <laughs> it's a different dynamic, you know. Uh, I put that on all the kids yeah. I teach. They start calling me Mr. Flynn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they call me Don Jack when I got the Tim's on. Uh, Senor. No, but... Um, but grown man yeah, goal. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a grown man goal. That's, that might even be more of a negative, which we'll get into later. But, yes, I agree for the positives. Athletic <clears> team. <throat> I was looking. In the, in, the, in the eight editions of the Copa America that have happened in this century, the home team has won three of those. We had Colombia 2001, Chile 2015, Brazil 2019. That's pretty huge. So we're looking at, like, let's just call it 50% because it's easier. About 50% win rate for the, the host nation. Now, that being said, uh, is – that Chile team was damn good. That Chile Brazil team winning at home is not really a surprise. In Colombia, I want to say that's their only uh, Copa America victory in 2001. And if I remember, some shit was going down in that tournament and some teams didn't participate. I think. I can't remember off the top of my head. But So there's that, that definitely kind of adds to the whole, oh, it's better to host. Yeah. Absolutely. Is there another positive besides it's happening here? And we're athletic. Is Greg Berhalter, is that a positive because it's continuity with the same manager? I guess you could frame it like continuity. I think that is the best thing about having Greg as a coach. Um, What else he brings to the table, he's going to make the players happy. They like him. I would rather have a good manager who can coach them that they dislike and it's going to prepare them for this competition. Greg Berhalter. I don't I don't think he's going to prepare you for what's going on here. I think with Greg, it's similar to how I feel with Klinsman, which is I feel like he kind of maxed out what he could have accomplished. Okay. It was his time to leave yeah. after, you know, uh failing to qualify for the 2018 World Cup. It was time. With Berhalter, I kind of feel like he's maxed this out. And what does maxing it out look like in terms of the Copa America? Probably a semifinals appearance would be damn good. A semifinals in the Copa huge. America would be massive for the U.S. And, and I would be so happy. And that's that. another positive is we made the semis in 2016, which on paper looks incredible. Now, I just want to remind people, on r- route to the semifinals, we beat Costa Rica, Paraguay, and Ecuador. A rough Ecuador. We lost to a terrible Ecuador. A trash Ecuador side. Not, not this Ecuador. No, 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 no. Different Ecuador. Oh, my God. I literally messaged Martin, and I was like, yo, am I tripping, or was this 2016 Ecuador side shit? He was like, we were Anthony Valencia in 10 mofos, is literally what he said. <laughs> he said it was Valencia and some randoms. I was like, that's what I thought. That's what I thought, because I'm <laughs> looking at this squad. Like. I'm, I'm like, I see a bunch of Liga Mekis guys, and then literally Valencia. And like, that, <laughs> that was it. I think Dominguez was still the goalkeeper, too. Not the greatest string of victories. No. And, you know, this is why sometimes just getting the dub is more important than how you get there because people forget how you get there. Yes, they just see the trophy. Correct. They just see, oh, semifinals. Oh, yeah, Mexico bounced out in the quarters to, to Chile. It's like, yeah, well, y'all, I mean, you beat Paraguay. I mean. No, it's a, it, that's a hot-button topic for, like, maybe maximum six weeks after. I don't want to be too disrespectful, but, like, that's not the greatest no. run to a semifinal in Copa America history. No, that's all not. I'm saying by that. Full stop. That's all I'm saying by that. And so that might give a false sense of confidence for U.S. fans that, oh, we can do it again. Because let me tell you, it's going to be a lot harder this time. I want to take a quick break to remind you guys to hit subscribe if you haven't already done so. And to follow us on social media, links in the description, so you know all about our upcoming videos and live streams. Thank you guys for the support. Now back to the video. The last positive I want to say is in theory, on paper only, because time will tell, we have seen the stars for the United States go from bad, toxic club situations to potentially very fruitful ones. Yeah. Mainly Pulisic and Tim Weah. Getting out of... Uh, well, I'm not going to say Tim Weah's situation at Lille was awful, but he's playing as a fullback. Obviously, right. he wants to be a winger. Not sure what will happen at Juve. It'll probably be a wingback role. And Pulisic gets out of Chelsea, which is huge. Massive. To AC Milan. I think it's a great situation for him. Even Brendan Aronson. He's not ready for the Prem. He's in the Bundesliga Union Berlin. Great. 
Who gives a fuck that it's a less popular, less sexy club? The man needs to play. Doesn't matter. The man needs and he to wasn't play. good enough. No. He wasn't good enough. No. So I think they made some moves on the personal level that could lead to better performance with the Nationals. Agreed. Agreed. No, this team is very much still looking like it's on the track of, of this, you know, similar prototype or, uh, yeah, similar prototype to Ecuador. The ceiling has yet to be determined. We yes. need to see where these guys are going to fall. This is not where they're going to land, you know, at their peak, the peak of their abilities. Very much not going to be this tournament. But it is going to be crucial to see on the road to their development, right? These are still kids. They're still maturing. We are going to get to see the fruits of all of their labor. And they've made some really wonderful moves that could really pay off with some high-end progress. Yeah. You know, some really wonderful progress. And that will be exciting but also nerve-wracking to see because i have a vested interest in in the usa winning don't don't get it twisted this isn't like a oh i hate the u.s i want to see them do poorly at copa america argentina all the way argentina all the way for me mexico all the way for me i would i would be happy if the u.s made made a decent run. and we'll do a mexico at a later date yeah. i don't even want to bring that team into the discussion because then we're going to be here for an hour and a half <laughs> okay so now we're going to do the cons uh, for this argument that the United States are going to potentially win the Copa. Not that he said they were going to win, but he but said it wouldn't be unrealistic. It wouldn't be un it wouldn't did he even say surprising? I don't want to twist the words. No. no it no. wouldn't be crazy to think. Yeah. That's what he said. It wouldn't be crazy to think. Um which look, he he raises he raises a good point. I know we're moving on to the negatives, but he raises a good point. It would not be crazy to assume this is the part that I yes. wholeheartedly agree with that they come out with an upset. Yes. Because if they do make Agreed. a progress that I think is like best case scenario or on the way to best case scenario, and a team shows up and they played like England did on the way to the, the World Cup, I think we could sneak a win away. We could sneak an ugly 1-0, to zero, typical Copa yeah. America win. Yeah, We could do that. Tyler Adams could, could, could put in that midfield shift that gets us the, the ball possession to, to feed somebody a goal. You know, mm-hmm. We could see some individual superstardom or a, a pass string together that ends and culminates in something nice and we get a one to zero if the other team is off of their game. Yeah, I agree. The it's negatives. not unthinkable. And if we right. forgot any positives or any pro arguments, you guys comment down below. Throw it down there. Yeah, throw it down there. I mean, if we want to have a discussion. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah. Let's this, the thing, we were talking about this last night. The last thing we want to do is like absolutely, you know, take the piss on, on either side of this argument. Yeah, yeah. Because there are nuances to, to be discussed, and that's, mm-hmm. that's why we're making this video. But I, I agree. Like, okay, United States win 2024 Copa America. Is that crazier than Greece winning the Euro? I don't think so. I think Greece winning a Euro is one of the greatest anomalies in international football. Agreed, yeah. Is it crazier than Qatar winning the Asian Cup? Probably closer, I would say, because Qatar... They were probably like a, the sixth favorite. Yeah, and U.S. is probably, in my book, probably the sixth favorite for this sixth tournament. Sixth favorite? Greece, bro, they're probably like 15th. Yeah. Yeah, they're probably like that. We, we'll probably never see that again. Um, no, probably It'd be not. like Haiti winning the Gold Cup or something. It'd be like insane. It'd be like my boys Guadalupe. Yeah, Guadalupe. It was close. What, what could have been? What, what could have been? been? Um, so, yeah, I don't think it's outlandish. to. Su- I don't think you should be like whipped for suggesting that this could happen. I just disagree. And yeah. we'll get into the cons now. Do you want to take the first one? Um, the first con is, is going to be the most basic one. It's overall skill level. Um, the magic that we see from South American ball is um, is what people love. I, I'm Argentine. I do not like Brazil. They play, at their peak, the most beautiful football. It is the beautiful game because of samba. Brazil. Yeah, samba it's football. samba. Yeah. Samba football. And they will samba on you all night long. And, and it can be gorgeous. We're not seeing that from this Brazil. But at the peak of their abilities, it is the reason that the beautiful game. We're talking Ronaldinho, Ronaldo, Rivaldo, um, even Neymar. People love to hate on him now. But, dude, Neymar, it's gorgeous. Some of the goals that we saw if him If you score, think Neymar sucks and you, you just don't know ball, I'm no, sorry. Like, you, you don't. I hate, hate to use that phrase, but, like, you just, you're just pretty ignorant, my friend. Very, very ignorant. I mean, it's... It is just insane. The goals that we were watching him score yesterday, 
athletic, effort driven, the the technical, the touch, the the beautiful dainty passes that he did, little toquecitos, bing 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 bing. For bing. me, it's his assist game that's underrated. It's it's unreal, dude. Yeah. The way he can sniff out a pass almost instinctively, it's it's beautiful, and yeah. the the finesse with which he drops them right at your feet. I mean, he makes Richarlison look good. Yeah. He makes Richarlison he does. look so much better than he is. He does. It is so outlandish. Like, it, it's it's just unreal. That's something Kane and Son couldn't do. Yeah, and it's, and it's something that the U.S. does not have. We don't have anybody like that. We don't have anybody with a magical touch like that. Do we have moments of individual brilliance that can potentially lead to goals? Okay. Mm-hmm. But... We we didn't see anything like that in 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 the Gold Cup or or the World Cup. Oh, like, Gold Cup squad's not even worth right. talking about. Yeah. Okay, then then we won't. But our senior team, the best of the best, cannot drop balls right at the feet of the players that need them. Balogun, I think, is going to have a severe issue after playing in the French league. It is going to be rough watching him come up against some of these bigger center backs that are going to play a lot more physically and. I don't even want to. Well, we'll talk about the refs in a second. That'll be my. That'll be my next point. You want to take the next negative from the from a talent perspective, just to add on what you said. I think you would need to see a United States roster with everybody pretty much on their A game mm-hmm. to make a semifinal. Healthy and on yes, their like I I need Gio Reyna to go beast mode mm-hmm. for that to happen. I need Balogun to be extremely clinical when he gets the chances. He puts them away because you know. When you're playing against an Uruguay, you might only generate three chances in one game. You miss those, tough shit. Yeah. You're not winning. I want them to call him a tap-in merchant. I literally, I want all of the reviews to say Balogun, tap-in merchant. That's totally fine with me. That means the balls are getting to him where they need to be, and he puts them away. Yeah. That's it. I think most I think most US fans would agree with you. Um, it, it just comes down to, like, if, if Pulisic has a bad tournament, if Way is ineffective, if if Jedi's getting beat one on one on the outside, that will work against uh, Venezuela, Bolivia, any of the other Concacaf teams that the U.S. somehow ends up against. It won't work against the best teams here. And the mm-hmm. second the, the second uh, con that I have is is, is really just <clears throat> speaking to the competition itself. I mean, I think teams like Uruguay had a disappointing World Cup. Colombia don't even qualify. Ecuador don't advance. And people might look at that and say, these teams ain't that good. These teams are beatable. And if you've seen Colombia recently cook in Germany, they're on fire. Their, their manager, Lozano, has them looking. I put them above the U.S. right now in my power rankings. I probably have Colombia as the fourth favorite. I probably go Ecuador five, United States six, and then probably Mexico seven. In Canada, I'm going to be real. John Herdman, he's kind of lost me a little bit. I've kind of lost faith in that program. He's lost the program, yeah. Um, Could they upset? Like, could Canada upset the United States in the Copa? Sure. I think they could beat them in a one-off game, but I don't see them beating Uruguay and all these other – I I just don't. Are you kidding me? Estaquiao is going to get humiliated. Bro, we're talking about a Marcelo Bielsa-led Uruguay. Like, that is a statement appointment. They have ushered in a new era of players. This isn't the Suarez-Cavani two-man up top show anymore. Mm -mm. This team is is going through an internal revolution to kind of modernize the team and the way they play. This is the best Ecuador side on paper – Arguably in history. Now, can they put that together? Maybe. I think Felix Sanchez will have them prepared by the time the Copa comes around. Peru, bless their heart, they're on their... Bless their heart. That generation, they, they've given every drop of blood that they have for Peru. They're still tough to beat. Those yeah. guys don't give up. The United States can't score one against Peru and then chill. Peru will not stop. Under Reynoso, I think he's done a decent job. And then Colombia, I think, are resurgent. They are, that is a wonderful word for them. They're resurgent. Yeah. They're resurgent. And a resurgent Colombia is not something that you want to see. Everybody associates them, I, at least I have, with the 2014 Colombia and James Rodriguez. That's no longer a factor. Yeah. This is a team now. Yeah. This is a whole team, and it's a team that is pissed off about the last Copa America. They're pissed off about the World Cup, and they're showing up hungry for blood. Let's not get it twisted. This is not the Euros. This is not the Asian Cup. This is not the Gold Cup. This is this is Copa America. My next point, the, the refs, 
I have no idea what these refs are going to look like in the United States. I wonder if they'll be CONCACAF refs. I wonder if they better not. Probably a boat. Probably it, some partnership. Like, we'll do half and half. It something. will not be Copa America if they have CONCACAF refs. You need CONMEBOL refs. Refs that are going to let the fellas play when they probably shouldn't. That is Copa America. That, to me, is what makes Copa America beautiful in an ugly way. Yeah, no, I agree. You want to talk all the shit that you want about the Euro Cup. Totally fine, and you can. Go ahead and do it. They would not be ready for the style of play in Copa America, purely because of the physicality and the sh- that you can get away with. It's different. Yeah. They're not going to give you anything for free. A Venezuela is going to oh, show no. up angry for, for absolutely no reason other than they want to put their mark on the table. When they show up against an Argentina or a Brazil or an Uruguay, one of the oh, big yeah. brothers, that is your chance to sucker punch the person who has been humbling you for years. And they will. And they will. They Bro, will let's do be it. clear. Even Paraguay and Chile, that's a tough game yeah. for the United States. Oh, it's yeah. a tough game for Mexico. Like that, these teams are not going to roll over. No. They're going to be like, oh, you're hosting it here? You're letting us into your house? Okay, let's talk Let's talk about it. You may have a beat make themselves international at relations. They're going to make themselves at home. Oh, yeah. They're going to come in. They're going to put their feet up. They're going to be sleeping in your bed. Studs. Studs up. They're going to be sleeping in their studs, yeah. dude. We'll see. We'll, we'll see how it goes. The refereeing, I, I think, is going to play a huge part. And that, that could swing. That could, that could be the difference. That could be the difference maker for the progress of this, this U.S. men's national team. Now... I think if any team can match that Copa America style play up until now, it's the Weston McKinney ripped jersey fighting mm-hmm. against Mexico. Mm-hmm. It's it's the uh, Jedi physicality in the back. It's the um, oh my God, please help me um, in the middle, um, dude. Tyler, Tyler Adams. Adams, Tyler okay. Adams, angry sort of uh, uh, possession style ball. Yeah, he's, he's gonna, gonna have guy. to be huge. He's gonna have to be huge. Yeah. And I think that they can be, but I still think even if they show up angry playing their A game, I still think that they're not going to be ready. They're going to get punched in the mouth. And if they can survive that first punch in the teeth, then then we'll see. We'll yeah. see how they go. This is going to be a big test to, to watch their progression from boys to men. The game against Mexico, that was a big one. That was a big one. This is going to be even bigger. I agree. And then kind of going off that, uh, the negative um, – I think I have to list Greg Berhalter yeah. because when I think of his entire time in charge of the U.S., I'm kind of struggling to think of that trademark win. Like, is his trademark victory beating Iran one nothing in the World Cup? I mean, yeah, he beat Mexico in the Nations League final. You know, that's probably a, a nominee for the. But we Mexico are not likely doing shit at this tournament so you can't be like oh we're beating mexico we're in good shape no 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 because mexico are in shambles right now it's rough it's like a rough situation yeah we we have an interim manager who came in won the gold cup awesome we're looking for i mean the semis would be huge that would be massive huge for, you, for mexico like that has to be the objective right now um so it's just not a good barometer and then who, who you, you beat canada in the nations league we also got stomped by canada you also got stomped we don't need to rehash that game too much, but, like, you score a set-piece goal 12 minutes in the match. Completely changes the game from there on out. If Chris Richards doesn't score the header, who knows? Like, I, I guarantee you it's a tighter game. So I don't even think the gap between the U.S. and Canada is, like, as big as some U.S. fans are trying to make out. I don't think that's the case. My point is, whenever Greg Berhalter led the United States against really good teams, whenever he led them against combo teams, he did a decent job to his credit, of not losing very often, mm-hmm. but he rarely won. Right. He rarely won. I mean, I was I was kind of looking at it. So he had six games in charge against combo bowl teams. He had one win, four draws, one loss. I can't remember who that win was. I think it was – it might have been I Ecuador. Very, it was very, very early on in his, uh, in his career. And let, let's be honest, guys. The U.S. record against most combo bowl teams, not good. Not good. Not good. So, yeah, it's a, it's a star-studded U.S. team. But I just think people aren't aware enough of what's going on in Common Bowl. Yeah. Like, these teams aren't just chilling. Everybody's going to try to win this goddamn tournament. Yeah. And can Burhalter adapt to a tough game down one nothing against Marcelo Bielsa's Uruguay? I don't think he can. No. We haven't seen it. 
We have not seen it. We have not seen it. it. I mean, look, we were just saying we need everybody playing at optimal abilities. You come up against a manager like Marcelo Bielsa, he's going to know how to eliminate one of those players from the game. Yeah. And if we need everybody firing on all cylinders and he silences a Tyler Adams or he silences a Jedi, that is a gaping, gaping weak spot through which he can then abuse us. Like, he is that quality of coach. Let's not get it twisted. Yeah. And we saw, remember when Leeds first came back onto the map, everybody's like, oh, my God, who's Bielsa? And they're like, oh, right, that's Pep's, like, mentor. That's what we're going to see from this Uruguay. I fully expect to see a resurgent Uruguay, way more physical, way more athletic, way faster paced than we have been used to seeing them. I'm scared. Dude, if you want to power rank just the favorites for the Copa, like, I'm going to maintain I have the U.S. sixth. If you want to power rank the managers at the Copa. Dude. Where is Greg Berhalter? Is Greg Berhalter the sixth best manager? I don't even I don't even know. I, I, I don't I don't think I know enough to, to speak to that. But my instinct is to say no. I, I really have no idea what does he bring tactically to the table, especially in a South American Conmebol context. How is he? Right. How is Greg nice, friendly, get along with everybody? Except cool, Giorena, yeah. Cool, yeah. <laughs> cool manager Brooks. Greg. How is he, a guy who, you know, has to deal with, like, subterfuge on the team and a mismanagement of that, how is he going to prepare these guys for the mentality that's going to be in Copa America? That's why I like Klinsmann, because Klinsmann's a hard ass. He's German. It's no bullshit. I'm going to tell you like it is. I'm scared Greg's going to coddle people. I don't know. Is there an argument that Berhalter is outperformed? With the U.S. because I rate I don't really rate managers for winning things like I do think that's very important. I rate managers who exceed expectations. Okay. Like, I'm sorry you put Greg Berhalter on Qatar in 2019. They ain't winning no. that fucking Gold no, Cup. No, 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 they ain't no. winning that Gold Cup. That's a good question. Um, like how was a how was Berhalter doing if he's managing Colombia? Do they bounce back no. in the way that they've done? No, no, no. Not Post well. Carlos Quiroz? But I, Probably I, not. The The reason that Bull, Burhalter has found like a modicum of success is because he is a very American coach, coaching a very American team in a very American way. They respond well to yes. him. The lads like him. He has so the trust of a lot of the players. He, he has the trust of a lot of players. He's got the locker room. Yeah. He's got the locker room Minus one or two guys. Yeah. Minus one or People two guys. People will try to go at us in the comments. No, the team likes Greg. Yeah. Gio Reyna might not like Greg. Claudio Reyna might not like Greg. But Pulisic does. Tim Weah does. Yeah. More of the guys that matter, if you want to say that, they, they do so like they Greg. So they play for him. Yeah. Is, uh, do we have him there for the tactical masterclass? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's vibes, I guess. It's vibes. Which does, does, has been working. It's been working. It's been working. But we, we, we've been a little sheltered uh -huh. as well. In a Conmebol content. Again, <laughs> another negative. This is a vindictive tournament. Teams very much show up to win, but I would say even more than that, when it comes to countries that maybe you resent, countries that you have rivalries with, you show up to make them lose. Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay, Chile, teams show up. The Venezuelas, the Paraguays of the world, they show up and they play angry against them. The fact that the U.S. Yeah. is showing up like the pretty popular rich girl on the block, they're going to play angry. And that first match where we see what these refs are doing, that kind of sets the tone. The first 15 minutes of these games against the U.S. are going to look rough because they're going to be trying. They're going to be testing. They're going to see what they can get away with. There's going to be <laughs> there's going to be targeting. There's going to be, what did that Oakland Raiders team do? What is it, the Mercenaries or whatever? That was the New Orleans Saints. Was the New Orleans Saints? Yeah. They were like buying contract, the hitman contract. Yeah, yeah. People? It's going to look like that. You like got that. paid for like hits and stuff. Oh yeah. my God, yeah. Studs up, they're going to be wearing like extra, the studs, an extra quarter of an inch long. They're going to be wearing rugby studs. It's going to, it's, it, I think it might be rough. It's a different beast. It's a different beast. They're going to show up not with the intention of winning the game, but the intention of making the U.S. lose. I think a lot of people have missed out on watching the Copa America, not even due to their own fault, but like the fact that it's the same time as the Euro. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's, just, it's just infuriating, in my opinion. But it's unfortunate. Mo most people are going to pick the Euro. Like, let's be honest. I mean, when I was in Europe, while the Copa America was going on, I couldn't even find it on TV. Yeah. Because it was just Euro everywhere. 
And I'm like, okay, this is cool, but like, I'm trying to watch Argentina, Colombia, and I couldn't find it. Like, I just had to check the score on my phone. I mean, it's it's not as accessible as it should be no. for being a premier tournament. So I think people don't understand what it's like to play in these tournaments. You know, the last one's behind closed doors. There's no there's no ambiance. There's no environment. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a different animal, man. This is a different And it presents animal. different challenges to a World Cup. It, of course, it doesn't have the, the studs of Africa and Europe and Asia in there to make this more difficult, but this is not this is not a Mickey Mouse tournament. This is an in-house tournament amongst family members, a large family, that, I mean, they've got beef to air out. Yeah. And this is where they do it. Yeah. This is the reason that we have sport. It's the Olympics. We're going to, you know, in to what is it to evade evitar war or conflicts we're going to do it here and you're going to bring those sentiments in any oh, yeah. sort of in-house issues that chile and peru have there's no friendliness there any sort of animosity that they have they're going to air it out argentina chile if you think there's not bad blood there still sorely mistaken and everyone everyone in south america resents the u.s Every single oh, person. Sure. They might be friendly to you when you go to Medellin and you want to go out and you club and you can see how nice it is on the TikToks and everybody wants to work remote there and then party at night. They're going to body you. Yeah. They're going to body them. Oh, yeah. Oh, after they body see this logo, them. they're going to body Dude, you. Dude, can you think about this? Think about this in, in like an international context. What would, dude, like... The, the French say if like the Euros was somehow miraculously hosted in the US and there was like a, a, an American flag behind their trophy or the English saw yeah that's a good point some shit like that or what if we had like the gold cup in in England or the Super Bowl was hosted in the UK and you saw the Union Jack behind your Super Bowl yeah I'd lose my fucking mind I'd be furious yeah, yeah that's a good point Dude, just imagine if Nadama Kansu sees the Canadian flag or the Union Jack flying behind his Super Bowl. Oh, he's going out there to hit somebody. He's going to injure somebody. Yeah. He's furious. That's yeah, true. It's true. And even worse, if there's a British team. Like, it's one thing if you're just playing with your teams, but you see the Union Jack behind it, and then what? You come up against Harry Kane playing kicker. And, like, I know Nadama Kansu is never going to tackle the kicker, but, like, Harry Kane wants to fulfill his field goal kicker punter dreams. Yep. Like, you see that man? I'm going to injure him. I'm going oh, yeah. for his knees. Oh, yeah. For I'm sure. Pissed. And I mean, it, it, let's not even talk about what the media coverage is going to be at this oh, tournament. Which, by God. the way, guys, we are going to be doing a comprehensive breakdown and preview of the Copa America. So hit subscribe for that. Yes. What do they, what do, they do when Alexi Lawless comes out and says U.S. is going to beat Brazil 2-0 in the final in his bracket challenge? You know what I'm going to do then? as a coach? I'm going to have the American, no, no, no South American coverage allowed. I'm going to have the American coverage of every single game playing in the locker room at all times so that you know what these assholes think, yep. what they're saying, yep. and you go out and you play angry. So you think, you know that Fox Sports is saying the U.S. is going to beat Ecuador 3 nothing. I'll tell you the coverage right now. Well, hear me out, Gray. I think that they're going to come in, and we've got a really athletic team, and we've got some problems. We've got some bunch of young studs coming up. They don't know what we're capable of here. And this Ecuadorian team, they've been doing pretty well. They've got some players in key positions in Europe, but I really think we've got a lot to give here. I'm going 2-0 to zero USA. Oh, my God. Are we the Ecuadorian kidding? locker room reading the subtitles are going to be like, It's coming, dude. We, we're going to kill them. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to that. And the final thing I want to say is, dude, it took Messi like five tries to win this thing. It took Messi five times to win this thing, not with Paraguay, with Argentina. You think that the U.S., second time around, just going just gonna to walk in and lift the trophy? This shit is hard to win, people. It's really hard to win. It's hard. Uruguay with Cavani and Suarez and Godin, the entire generation has won. They have won Copa America. Neymar, you you, Neymar has not won it. Neymar has not won a Copa America. Neymar has not won it. But Brendan Aronson <laughs> and Tim Weah are going to win this thing. <laughs> Tim Weah bringing it home, baby. Like, dude, that's where, that, that's where this starts to get delusional. I mean, and, and look, I'm not hating on the U.S. If I no, see no. Mexico fans in the comments saying, we're going to win this tournament, I will call you out. 
I will absolutely block that shit at the rim because it's completely delusional. And you're setting the team up for failure if you let that narrative start circling around that like, oh, yeah, Mexico should face Argentina again in the final. No, no, we shouldn't. We shouldn't. That would be a massive overachievement. So I don't want to be like, well, of course Jack's saying this. He doesn't like the U.S. I'm just being real. And if you can't handle that, that's on you. Yeah. I'm sure there are some accounts out there that are saying that, you know, 2026 World Cup, U.S. is going to win that too. But you're not going to see that on Deadball TV. I'm sorry. No, absolutely uh, you, not. You just, you're just not. Um, we're pretty much out of time here, guys. So you got anything else you want to close with? Who are the favorites? Uh, I would say Argentina is the favorite number one. If Brazil get Ancelotti, I'll put them up there. Need to see more from Bielsa's Uruguay first. Exactly, yep. Yeah. Because they've only played two games without any of the first team guys. So it's literally impossible to gauge. Bro, Colombia look good right now, man. Colombia do look good. They look good right now. Colombia and Uruguay are my sleepers, just to see, like, what happens there. Um, I don't think... I love Ecuador. I don't think they can win it. I don't think they can win it. I don't it. think they're, they can win they're it. They're not either. there yet. I don't think... I think it would be bad for them to win it. A frankly. semifinal would also be good for Ecuador. Yes. Oh, I think it'd be great. That'd be fantastic. I want them to... What I would love, go out in a two to three game against a giant in the semifinal. Just to, like, taste blood, get them angry, and let them know that they can win. They can win. Or lose in pens or something like that. Yeah. Give them more. But, yeah, I, I'm very much of the same mind. I, I would have Ecuador more as a, a dark horse. Than, I don't know if you can call Uruguay a sleeper. Like may, okay, may, yeah. Maybe this, you can. That's what I meant. Dark horse, un, underdog. No, I guess not even underdog. But I'm kind of I, – I can't believe I'm saying this, but Chile, bro. They just they just won't die. Like, I, I don't see them making the semis, but I see them making the knockouts. Yeah, and this is their tournament. This, like, the, let's, yeah. let's be completely real about this. In the last five, this is their tournament. Yeah. I think there's some internal problems with Chile right yeah. now that are kind of plaguing the team. You know, classic, comable South American corruption. Nothing new. Nothing to see here, Absolutely folks. No. Business as usual. Yeah, business as usual. I'd be concerned if it wasn't there, honestly. But, the, I mean, these guys ain't going to be scared. No, they're not. They won this shit twice. Yeah. Back to back. They're like, okay. You know, they, maybe, maybe we got one more hurrah in us. That well, What they're saying right now, again, they're like, what they're going into this as, we're probably not going to win it, but we're going to make you remember us. And for damn sure, whoever we come up in the elimination game against, like, you're not going into the next game with a full squad. Yeah, bro. Dude, even Venezuela. Vindictive. Even Venezuela. We said Venezuela. in our in our predictions uh, or our, our reaction to the June window, bro, Venezuela, the last 10 games, great record. Like, some something good is happening in Caracas right now, and it's not inflation. It's happening. <laughs> it's not political. The, no, that's, that's, that's still out of control. <laughs> but at least... Vino Tinto looks like they could Vino be putting Tinto. it together. Bro, that's a tough Vino game for Tinto. the U.S. That that's a, a, that's tough a tough game. game. I'm that's sorry. Game. Maybe Bolivia is probably the easiest game because you, it's not in Bolivia. The Venezuela game, when they're down bad, last Copa America, the Venezuela game against Ecuador that we watched the highlights of, I will never forget two, that two. game. 2-2, yeah. I, w- I was watching that. We were My whole family was eating dinner. I was like looking at the TV the entire time. Great game. If they show up and play like that, they better hope it's not an elimination game against the U.S., we don't make it past that. We don't make it past that. Dude, I mean, I'm, I'm worried. I'm really worried for I'm Mexico. Worried too. Yeah. Well, like I said, Mexico video coming at a different date. This video was all about the United States and uh, kind of where they stack up in the Copa America conversation. You guys let us know your thoughts down below in the comments. Make sure you leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe because when those new Copa America videos come out, you know, when the groups are announced or the pots are... I'm not really sure what the timeline is with all that, all but we it. will be doing videos for it. And if you want to see that, you need to be subscribed so that you know about it. So make sure you do so. If you're listening on streaming platforms, make sure you get the podcast a five-star rating, share it with a friend who you think might enjoy it. We appreciate you guys for watching or listening. Also, check out our social media links down below. We'll see you on the next one.